Hi everyone, welcome to Fat to Thin Senior RNY. I'm Raven. I'm 76 years old and I had gastric bypass surgery on December 16, 2019. Medicaid approved and paid for the surgery. Last week I walked, talked about uh, my journey so far and how I got to, to where I am now, you know, the six months leading up to the surgery itself. In this vlog, I'll be talking about being safe at home as opposed to being stuck at home. It's a mindset thing, you know. If you're curious, please join me on this journey and continue to watch and please comment. <laughs> Last week I talked about my journey so far and the steps that I took to get to where I am now, you know, the six months or so. I'm down almost 40 pounds um, and I had 120 to lose. I'm a third of the way gone already, which is wonderful. It's nice walking around, people saying, yay, you know, wow, you look, you know, 20 years younger, which is really cool, especially at my age. I found on this journey that I need to pay attention to what's running around in my head. <clears throat> I say things like, one cookie is okay. You deserve it. I don't know why I deserve it, but I deserve it. Um, it's real food. A second helping won't hurt. You know about those too, right? I don't need to, I don't, I think I, I don't need to know how those thoughts got there. Although, so, you know, stories turn up every now and then. It's just that they're there, and I've been using them for years to do something to me, berate me. I don't know why the thoughts that run around in our head seem to be always negative, or, you know, it just, it's what you can't do. Is it some kind of safety mechanism or something or the other? Some scientist needs to let me know. <clears throat> and the thing is, you know, I'm talking like my mind is an independent part of me, but the thing is, is that you can always change your mind. It might be good. One cookie might be okay. And you might deserve it. And then again, you may make a decision to say, I don't want to do that. You know, the point is, is to make the decision. You can change your mind. You can change it anytime you want to. It's a matter of... <laughs> wanting to or doing it I think it's the doing part that's that's the hardest I mean after all I have 120 pounds to lose you know so I'm out there with you you know I think a lot of this stuff that, that this this extra 120 pounds is anxiety is a result of anxiety and fear and just giving up and whatever I know I feel that anxiety is just like a movie running around in your head, you know, and it goes around in circles and circles and you keep repeating the same thing and variations on the same thing. I've found that when I journal, and I've been journaling a lot, I actually I've been journaling every day since I started this journey. And I found that when I write stuff down that it's really not, you know, 10, 15, 20, 50 things running around in my head, it's two or three and it just keeps going around in circles and I put different color variations on it you know it's like buying a sweater you know <laughs> you know do I get this one or do I get that one you know or should it be pink or should it be red or blue you know whatever it's it's just crap running around in your head <clears throat> and I think that anxiety is because we pay too much attention to that stuff running around in our heads and we don't make a decision. I think that journaling helps because it really brings it down to two, three things. And then then you can really think about it. When you got it in black and white, you can really think about whatever it is that's causing you this anxiety without all of the extra crap. You know what I mean? 
<clears throat> I think fear <laughs> is anxiety going to the boiling point. I mean, it's gotten to the point where you're just absolutely inactive, incapable of being inactive, of capable, <laughs> incapable of being active. That's <laughs> right. You got to choose something. Basically, choose anything. It really, I mean, after all, if you choose and you make a decision, you automatically feel wonderful. You feel better. And the thing is, you can always change your mind. You can change to a different decision or a variation on the decision or whatever. But the thing is, is it gets rid of the anxiety. It gets rid of the fear. Then you can function. Know what I mean? We're all going to have to make a decision about whether to go back to work or not. I'm retired. I don't have to make that decision. And how to live life forward from here. Do we walk around with masks on? Does it become common? Do we do like our president does and greets people with a namaste and, uh, instead of a handshake? Which is very graceful. As a matter of fact, I got to hand that to him for picking that up from how many billions of people in India and similar places. We have to... We're going to have to keep ourselves safe. I don't believe we'll drop into anarchy or martial law or anything like that. I think that we are just going to go back to work eventually and just do some things a little bit differently. I mean, other places, if we look at other places that have gone back to work or opening up their borders again and that kind of stuff, you'll notice that they did not drop into fear and riots and all of that kind of good stuff. If you look at Cuba, who um, was completely ostracized by America and whatnot and could not get any kind of supplies into their country for years, uh, did not drop into anarchy, did not drop into martial law, and actually have come out the other side really remarkable. You ought to check out Cuba. There might be some oh, terrific place to visit one of these years, too. At any rate, <clears throat> you got to protect yourself. you got to keep yourself together. I mean... I don't think you're going to have to worry about your neighbors trying to come in and kill you off for your rice, you know what I mean? But it's still good to know what's around you, keep aware, that kind of good stuff. And let me tell you about fear. When I was a kid, and somewhere around five, somewhere to five to eight, around the beginning of the 1950s, I lived in a housing project in Harlem in New York City. And in the building across from us, uh, the housing authority had ripped out the walls between two apartments and com completely reconfigured that apartment. And a family with 18 children moved into that, to that <laughs> monster apartment. But one of the kids had polio. Now, I was somewhere around maximum eight years old. They had 18 kids. Nobody wanted to play with those kids. I didn't want to play with those kids. I didn't want to get polio. I mean, I, I wasn't going to touch. I wasn't going to go near them. And neither did anybody else. Eventually, they moved out because they were pretty much ostracized by the community without anybody actually doing anything. You know, they just were, weren't accepting. And the fear was real. I mean, the polio vaccine, didn't, they didn't start giving them out until 1954. I remember, and it wasn't even mandatory until 1963. Uh, I was scared. I was scared just like every other kid around there. I didn't want to die. I didn't want to end up crippled. I didn't want to not be able to breathe and be in a ventilator for the rest of my life. And at that time, they were called iron lungs because that's what they looked like. They were huge things the size of your bed, you know. Now you get on a ventilator, it's a little mask over your a little machine on the side, you know. 
But I was scared. I was scared like every other kid was scared. We did not know what this disease was or how it got transmitted but, or anything about it except you didn't want it. Did not want it and the best way to not get it is not be near it, you know. Now, I was a little kid, you know. I was just a little kid with no knowledge, nothing. I remember, though, when I got my shot in my arm, and I still have the mark somewhere right there. I was happy. I'm, I'm, I realized that I was just a little kid. <laughs> you know, kids think, too. But I was very happy. I thought from the second they stuck that needle in my arm till today that I was protected from polio. I didn't know about antibodies. I didn't know about any, but I was thrilled. I, I was so afraid. And I didn't realize that I was afraid until I got the shot after the kids moved in and I got the shot. Now you got to think about what about your kids? I don't know how old you people are out there. Oh, most of you are probably younger than me, but, and you got little people running loose around you. They're thinking too. And um, children are very smart. So you need to talk to them. You need to talk to them. You need to express your fear and your anxieties and let them see how you handle it and go from there because this is not the last disease. It's not going to be the last and it's not the first. And these kids are harboring all kinds of fears just like you. You know, they need to know that disease happens and so does ease. And they flip-flop back and forth, you know, both sides of the coin. You get some days where it's really cold, you get some days where it's really rotten. You know, and that's the way it is okay and you know what to do to keep yourself safe okay even if you don't do anything about survival you need to know about it I mean what happens you're living in a 40-story building and your water gets turned off or your electricity gets turned off or any of the any of the possibilities that if I sat here long enough, I could probably think of at least a dozen. So you need to find out, what about things like solar cooking? What about solar energy for charging your devices? I have multiple battery packs. This one is solar. I can charge my phone with this. It costs $13. It wouldn't hurt to invest in something like that. This one... Oops charges my car. So if I, oops. so if I have problems with my car, I can charge the battery on that. I can also use that to charge the battery, charge anything else. Absolutely anything else. And I think this was like $75. Doesn't hurt to have them. A solar cooker solar charging device, some kind of emergency shelter. I personally keep water in the house all the time. You keep two gallons of drinking water for each person in the house. In fact, I keep two gallons in the car because I live in the southwest and it gets hot, <laughs> you know. And if the car breaks down in the middle of the desert, I got two gallons of water. You should have an escape plan, some kind of meetup plan. Where are you going to meet your relatives? How are you going to get there? All of that kind of good stuff. So even if you don't do anything about it now, it helps ease anxiety. It helps ease fear if you have some kind of a plan, some kind of a something in place. Okay? <clears throat> so anyway, getting off of that kind of good stuff, let me talk about Rowley. Rowley, oops, oh, I was going to pick him up, but he jumped down. Rowley is doing okay. I think he's happy, as I said before, I still think he's happy. And um, 
I didn't write it down. There was a woman that wrote in and suggested on how to f feed him to eliminate digestive problems. Uh, you should know it worked. <laughs> okay, and thank you for that. Um, so to sum up, I'm feeling good. I still have no regrets about this surgery. I would do it everything all over again, and I would push for it faster if I could have gotten it faster. I'm sorry for those of you who have had your surgery postponed, but it's only postponed, okay? Um, keep trucking. Keep stay on whatever part of the diet you're on or in the process of what you're doing. Just keep going because this is not going to last forever, okay? I found the surgery beneficial, and I don't know, I don't believe that I could have lost 40 pounds as fast as I did without the surgery. Even knowing what I know about eating now, um, I don't believe that I could have done it. I don't believe I could have done it ever, lost the 40 pounds. I would still, I'd go to my deathbed at 135 and I'd still be 100 pounds overweight because <laughs> I would have lost those 10 pounds a hundred times, you know. So anyway, I would do it again. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. And don't forget to click show more below to see the descriptions below. Uh, there's some, I threw some links in there for beginner survival thinking and gear and that kind of good stuff. Just to spark your head. You know what I mean? Take care of you and yours and blessed be.